Hello stitching friends. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. I have started doing floss tube videos and then I do a separate quilting video where I go deeper into quilting and just show a little bit of a teaser about the quilts that I'm going to talk about on that quilting video, which this is what it is. But if you're interested and would like to learn more about my life as a cross stitcher and doing embroidery and wool applique, check out my floss tube videos as well. This is going to be a little bit different video than I had originally planned. I am loving the comments and the connection that I am making with my viewers, which is you. Um, as you're watching the videos and you're connecting and just sharing about your stories and your life as stitchers and I am I am just amazed at how wonderful it this is and yes at the beginning I would comment and talk saying ladies and you ladies and I have several people that have said it's not just ladies out there there's guys that are watching too and I commented this morning in response to someone just reminding me that there's guys out there. And I said, I am totally amazed. My first video I uploaded September 5th and already I am nearing 3,000 subscribers. Today is um, Monday, October 19th and I still can't believe it. And I was just saying in my comment that I was just expecting a few of my um, quilting guild friends and a few of my stitching friends and personal family to watch my videos. I had no idea the hunger that people have out there to connect with other stitchers. Totally makes sense and that's actually why I started these videos but still just amazed and so gratified um, for, for the ability for me to brighten your day. Um, that's what my goal is. I just wanted to connect with other stitchers in this avenue. And then I also wanted just to uplift, to encourage, to be positive. I try to stay positive. I myself struggle with anxiety and depression. So one of the things that I do, I really love natural health. So one of the things I do is try to take care of my mind. And I am a woman of faith. And so at the end, I will just share verses or just things that God is just showing me just so I can share that with other people. So this video is going to be about the threads that I use both for the hand applique that I do, the machine stitching that I do, and um, the hand quilting that I do. So I'm going to do that at the very beginning because some people, I'm going to put that in the title. So some people may just be interested in the thread. So I'm going to do that at the beginning. Then I'm going to share. I had one of my commenters just say, what sewing machines do I use? What tools do I use? Because she was so darling and said that she wants to get the same gadgets and tools that I use so she can produce the same kind of quilts that I do. And I've got to tell you my love language. I talked about love languages on another video. Um, I think that was my quilting video number three. Um, and my love language is words of affirmation and also acts of service. So when people are just um, just saying so many sweet things to me that I just I just eat it up. I love it. Um, so that's where I thought, oh, that is a good idea because I one of my goals is to inspire. So if I'm inspiring you to either get into quilting for the first time, try my type of hand applique for the first time, or my type of modified big stitch. I love it and I just want to share some of my tools. So I've got stuff laid out in front of me. Then also I'm going to be sharing about this quilt, which is the Jan Paddock Three Cabins, which I very much changed this area of it in the corner. I'm also going to share about this quilt that I call my Rick Rack Remix. And then this quilt that is um, still in process and that's what I call my crazy pumpkin log cabin. Um, so hang tight if you would like to, hopefully you're stitching or you're just relaxing and, um, and I'm just sharing. So here we go. It's probably going to be an hour long video and hopefully I don't get distracted because I work on call 
And since I didn't get this done yesterday as planned, um, I'm just going to be having to watch for my phone. Outside my window, right in front of me, I have my garden. And right outside my window, I have a pink bottle brush, kind of an oversized bush, um, not quite a tree. And there's a hummingbird out there. So that's what I love in the morning. I'll sit in here or out back in my garden. And I'll have my cup of coffee and I'll just look at the wildlife and I enjoy that. This is my sewing room. This is very much my happy spot. I am also named a log cabin stitcher because we do have a little tiny old log cabin up in the San Bernardino Mountains. And this looks very much like um, our cabin. And um, that is my other happy spot. And then out in my garden as well. So let me share with you first about my threads. And then I'll just go on to some of the tools that I'm enjoying, the machines that I have, and then on to the quilts. So I may need to be putting my glasses on and off so I can actually be seeing um, what I'm doing, but I know it'll reflect and you guys will just hang up or hang tight with that. So when I first got into hand applique, um, I went through a process of different threads that I was using. So I do the freezer paper method of hand applique. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but I will do a future light tutorial just on how I do it and the method I do. But I know I've searched other videos. There are other videos out there. And it's just the type of applique that I enjoy. I don't enjoy needle turn. I like the freezer paper because I feel it's all prepped and ready for me and I just sit down. And I am addicted to color and texture. That's why I garden. That's why I stitch, and that's why I also display my collection of fabric and quilts, even quilts in progress, and threads in a way that I can enjoy them just by looking at them. So originally, I believe it was Guterman, the thread that I was using for hand applique, and I was talking to my sister and I said, my stitches aren't turning out the way that I like. And so she recommended um, DMC machine embroidery, no, machine embroidery thread. I was going to say embroidery floss. I have two boxes. This is one of them. So you can see the beautiful colors there are, the variations there are, and even just the perfect box. This is just one of those divided boxes um, that you can get at the box stores, Michaels and Joann's. I've seen these around. Um, I have a thing. I don't like noise and this clicks and makes noises, but that's okay. I also have a second one because now I am using this for my quilt or for my stitching as far as on the sewing machine. So now I actually store these behind me over there. Um, so when I was enjoying these and I, I used these for years up until this year, I now have switched to RFL 80 weight threads. But during the time that I was using these, they were beautiful. And even my Instagram profile picture is a picture with these um, sewing machine threads, which is machine embroidery threads. And I love the colors. It's a 50 weight, so it's nice and thin. And um, they work beautifully. I also use these for sewing on my binding. I hand sew with a blind stitch on the back um, my binding. So I still use these and they're valuable. Now I now am switching over and you'll see these little things. I have these everywhere. Um, these are the little colonial needle suede fingertip. Those are my thimbles that I use when I do hand applique. And since I'm going to be going through this pile that I have stacked up, the other thing that I use, because my mom taught me with these, the Peacemaker's hand applique needles. The eye is incredibly small. Sometimes even with my prescription glasses, I can hardly see it. So I have found the ultra thin threader on the Peacemakers, which is, this is spelled this way. So P-I-E-C-E-M-A-K-E-R-S. Um, the ultra fine threader is also available on the Peacemakers website. And I ordered quite a few of them because it really helps me as I'm stitching. So this is a great thread to use for your hand applique. When I do my hand applique, I love 
having it where I do not see the stitches. So it's taken quite a while and I have done quite a lot of hand applique. Every time I'm doing a different form of stitching, I think, oh, this is my favorite thing to do. This is my favorite thing to do. But honestly, I think when I have everything prepped, which is why I tend not to do, or to, I don't even do the needle turn, I do the freezer paper because like I said, it's all prepped, it's ready, I get it glued on there, and all I do is sit down there with my box of threads, and I sit and stitch with good lighting, and I love it. So that's why I love um, my form of applique. Then I... Um, I was with some other stitchers earlier this year and I was showing them what the types of quilts that I do and a lady came up to me and she said, have you tried Arafil 80 weight? And I said, no, I, I use the 50 weight for, um, sewing for machine sewing. She said, you should really check it out. And there was actually a vendor on site, um, when she was telling me, so I went over there and of course I bought a collection. So this was the original collection that I purchased. So this is the 80 weight and it was glorious handwork. It's empty right now because I'm going to show you. Um, but it was, I believe it was 10, no, 12 small spools. No, 20. That's because I don't have my glasses on 20 small spools. And these were good colors, colors that I would use. So this, this might be a great collection to do. So there are two places that I get my Arafil now. Um, one of them is Twisted Threads Fabric. They're, they were on site, and so I bought it from them on site when I was there. But now Twisted Threads Fabric, I buy on their Etsy site. So um, the fabric, um, they sell fabric and thread. But the Arafil 80 weight, I have... I've bought two collections, but now I'm buying singles. Singly, they are $6 a spool. If you buy $35 or more, it's free shipping. So that's great. And then here's something really cool. I also knew that Fat Quarter Shop had a good price. They were $6.24. I went on their site last night and they were on sale. Like I said, today is October 19th. I do not know how long they were gonna be on sale. I was shopping right before midnight and I was trying to go fast in case it ended at midnight. But I checked this morning, they are still on sale. They're down to like $4.37. So I bought quite a few. And um, it's just, it's funny. I'm a paper person. So I have my um, my little moleskin notebooks. I love these. This is a small size on Amazon. And I have it listed out by paper. I know there is an RFL, um app. I didn't find it very helpful. And maybe that's because I didn't understand it. But you're supposed to be able to... Um, keep track of your um, colors that you have. I'm a paper person, so I had, it just made me happy just to go down, put a little dot next to the ones that I had, list all the colors that they carried, so then I can put a little dot next to the ones that I wanted. So that was kind of helpful last night, so I didn't double buy, which I've done that before. Then I just made a list. You can see I ordered quite a few. I probably ordered 15 more um, I made a list of all the ones that I wanted to get on Fat Quarter Shop, push that button while they were still on sale, um, and now I will be adding to my collection. No, I don't need all those colors, but you know what? That's not what this uh, hobby is about. A lot of it, I know, is about collecting, um, and we are collectors out there, aren't we? So I, instead of storing them in the collection boxes that I originally got them in, um, I'm now storing them in some plastic boxes. This is the other set that I got, Song of Williamsburg. Um, and this was a really neat collection. It's by Wendy Shepard. I bought this on her Etsy site, actually, the designer. And it was very soft, subtle colors. So I had kind of the darker colors, the softer colors, and that was a great collection. But then, you know, had to get some more. And so this is now what I have. And of course, when I get my that quarter shop haul will add some more to it. I enjoy um, plastic boxes because I can see through them. And I have a really neat, I was watching Lori Holt's sewing room tour. I watched it over and over because I loved it. And she had some rolling carts. So I went to Joann's and I bought one of their rolling carts and it was, you know, it was on the coupon. So it was, it was probably $35. I really like the cart that I bought. It has a handle on top. It rolls very well. There's there's rolling carts everywhere. 
Um, but this usually sits on top of my rolling cart right under my window along with my other hand stitching items and it just makes me happy to look at every time that I open the window. That's what my threads are to me. They are not simply to use. I get almost more enjoyment out of just looking at them and looking at the colors. So these are many of the colors that I have chosen. So these, I'm separating these right now into the blues and greens. This was usually supposed to be on the bottom. Then I have the reds, oranges, and browns, and then the pinks and blues. I tend not to do that many pinks, blue, and purple. Um, these are the ones that I don't use as often, but I am really enjoying trying different colors. I'm so inspired. I'm in the Night Owl Quilters Guild. We meet in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Generally, we meet. The world has changed for right now, but if we get to go back to normal, I am I'm so looking forward to it. So if you're local into the area, please go on their website. I think it's nightowlquilters.org. Um, See, check it out. Watch for when we get to meet again. I know they're doing Zoom classes. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, I am so inspired because I do the darker quilts. They make me happy. I am so inspired by seeing other people's um, brighter quilts. And let me just show you because I'm going to be going back and forth. I keep um, my items out because I like to look at them. They're sitting on the back of my table, my sewing machine table. And I got so inspired. I took several classes and I, I wanted, I was determined to learn how to use bright colors. When I choose colors, it does not come, it's not like a logical thing. A lot of people are logical, like the color wheel, that makes sense to them in their mind. For me, I'm like an emotional, I've got my emotional antennas out. I know what I like by how it makes me feel. People that are logical will not understand that. Just like I don't understand even how to use the color wheel. People can explain it to me and it's like, I just go by what makes me happy. So I have done some unusual. So this is the K-Facet. I bought some jelly rolls. This is the grunge. Um, it had a bit of texture. So I just bought some charm packs and I cut um, these orange peels. You can get a lot of these neat patterns. I'm gonna put this together into an orange peel um, quilt, but you can see I'm delving into some brighter colors as well. So it's just been kind of intriguing and neat, but I can tell you these are fun and I like them, but I love my dark. They make me feel so warm and cozy. I wanted to share with you just, because this is gonna be a longer video, some of the ways that I store things. Now, I got these originally at Target. Like I said, I love plastic boxes. So this was a set, they snapped together and it was a set of three plastic boxes. Then I went to a couple different Targets and because everybody's locked at home, we're trying to clean and organize. So plastic boxes are so hard to find right now, especially Sterilite. I like Iris. Um, plastic boxes and I like Sterilite. Those are generally the, the strong plastic ones that I enjoy. This is a Sterilite three drawer stack. You can still get them. I had them shipped to me from um, Target.com. You may be able to find them on Amazon, but that's how I like to store things and you have to make sure they are clipped together and you can carry this as a stack so you can have your projects organized. There is one that comes with these separators. I tend not to use those, but I save those because you never know when you're going to use those. So that's why I have a large variety of threads because I, I enjoy them, but also because I am experimenting um, with different fabrics. Now, the difference between the DMC 50 weight and the RFL 80 weight, the larger the number, the smaller the project, like the gauges are the same. So the, the thinner the thread, I have also found, and again, I loved my DMC, that I probably used those, I can't remember when I started uh, hand applique, but I would say eight to maybe 10 years, I have been using my DMCs. And now I'm really liking, because I'm making a lot of project bags that are brighter colors, I love using those um, also for machine quilting, machine stitching. Um, 
but the R fill 80 weight is thinner and it goes through the fabric. It's very silky. I think it's Egyptian cotton. It's very silky and smooth, so it glides through beautifully and I can have my stitches hidden. So I am very much enjoying that. They also DMC the colors in the greens. I do a lot of greens and neutrals. I found, and I will put it in the description box. I load up the descript description box. It takes me about 45 minutes to type all my notes in there. So check out what I put in there. I will put my two favorite neutrals that I use of the DMC thread because I know it's these ones. These are the, actually the ones that I use most often. And they are, so this one's almost empty, but I have another full one. Um, that's, of, you know, of all of them, you can see that's the one I use the most. So I'll put that number there. Um, so that way, if you want to try it out and you like my colors, those would be, that would be one to check out. Now, as far as the Aurifil, there is a greater opportunity to purchase um, a lot of shades. And they're probably coming out with more, I'm guessing. But I have more shades than I need. But again, that gives me pleasure. So the Aurifil is a beautiful hand applique thread. Because it is thinner, that hand applique that you're doing is going to be more fragile. And so generally a quilt like this, I would not have on a bed. There's a lot of hand applique in there. As you're sitting on it, because the mattress moves, the stitches can pop. I do have a quilt on my bed that has some applique, but it's not on the edge of the bed. It's more in the middle. I use it. I've used it for years and it has not had any problems. So those are the things that you need to think about as you're doing that beautiful stitching. If it's for a kid, you want them not to worry. You want them to have a good rough and tumble quilt that they can enjoy and it can get washed. So that 80 weight is more for the wall hangings, more for something that would be of an adult use where it's not rough and tumble. But again, a lot of the things that we do are just for the pleasure of doing them. So um, enjoy. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, this was the other box. I like collections and this is also what I bought when I was there as a vendor. And this is just wool, it's called Wool Essentials. And I have not used them yet, but this is for when I would do wool applique. So it was just fun to get and fun to have. And I have it displayed where I just see this and it gives me pleasure too. Excuse me, I'm gonna flick this up, it's a reminder. I just wanna make sure I'm still videoing because I've done that before where it's not actually videoing. The other thing I wanted to share with you are the threads that I use for my machine. When I first learned how to sew, I had a brother sewing machine um, that I was given on my 18th birthday for graduation, but I learned how to sew at 16. My first job was at a fabric store. My mom taught me how to sew. I loved it, made all my cl own clothes. Um, I loved it. And I used the threads that we had at that time. I would purchase Coates and Clark. Um, there was at the fabric shop that I worked at, there were several other specialty threads. I got those, I enjoyed them. I tended not to get the really cheap threads because I knew working at a fabric store, a quality thread will last longer. So I had a huge collection. I have a whole drawer. I was gonna show you that drawer and I went to move it last night because I, I started videoing yesterday and today, yesterday was just a, a, a not a good video day. And as I went to move it, I dumped that whole thread drawer on the floor. So I got to reorganize it and get on the floor with my dog and um, and do that. But I have a whole um, large plastic um, drawer with all those threads in there. And I will use those if I need to. But for now for machine sewing and machine quilting, I, I, um, I have a beautiful sewing machine that I would love to share with you that can handle machine quilting. But it's not my natural style. It makes me nervous. Um, I love just sitting and relaxing and hand quilting. Yes, it takes a lot longer, but it's the process. So here's a great collection of threads um, that someone that does my colors would enjoy if they wanted to get a box. This is 
um, the perfect box with neutrals by Pat Sloan and it really is a great box of neutrals um, and you can see they're all still pretty new they're in their wrapper because most of the colors that I use are these um, creams and I have a whole nother box of cream so I'm using those up and again this just gives me pleasure to look at those colors so I ordered a couple more last night um, because those were on sale also at Fat Porter Shop but the 50 weight is what I like using and you can see with Arafil they do theirs um, by color coding and again oh my goodness these Arafil 80 weight they're on cherry wood the, the spools themselves are just a pleasure to look at that's why I like seeing them it is wood and it is beautiful I wish Arafil did all those with wood because orange is not my color and I have these out where I see them but it's like it's orange but that lets you know it is the 50 weight um, 50 weight is just of course a little bit thinner than other people use the 40 weight and those come on green spools so it's whatever you prefer if you're doing something for especially maybe a child where I called it the rough and tumble you may want to use the 40 weight a little bit thicker a little bit stronger less worries I'm enjoying the 80 weight I've not been blessed with grandkids yet um, I'm sorry I'm enjoying the 50 weight for my stitching then the seam allowance is just that much smaller when you go to iron it over so RFL 50 weight sewing machine RFL 80 weight hand applique DMC machine embroidery thread 50 weight for my hand applique sometimes when I go to watch my videos later I'm thinking why did I say that and I haven't learned how to edit and put in the correction yet um, so it's funny just clarifying all that with you so hopefully we're good to go on all the threads if you have any questions just do a comment and I'll catch up with whatever I did not explain so now we're already a half hour into this and I have stuff in front of me the thread was what I really wanted to share with you and because that was that was the thing I've really been wanting to share what I learned about that RFL 80 weight um, but whatever you're using that's working go for it because it's working for you okay so the other thread that I got out I had already shared about how I use these acrylic Muji drawers to store my Valdani thread so these are the Valdani one time I called them over dyed they're not over dyed they are variegated and I have four drawers of these you can see no news now I'm addicted to color so these are the ones that I have and it's so cool because I was saying oh I wish there was a way to be able to keep the little label on instead of this is what I learned how to do instead of just throw I threw a couple away at the beginning so that way when I go to reorder I know what it is I just stuck it in there so several of my viewers commented and recommended me to go on Lisa Bonjean it's um, stitching with Lisa and she had a preserving your floss ball um, it was just a two-minute tutorial on how to do this so now there's a certain way that you thread that label it's a little awkward dealing with and I just have to deal with that and then I just pull it I hold it in my hand this is how I do it and I pull off when I'm when I'm um, oh I'm doing that this is the thread that I'm using for that um, Rick Rack remix there we go um, and this is when I go to do the hand quilting I do two two lengths so I can go a long way worm 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 um, that's how I stitch I try to do a continuous line on the borders I can go a long way without having to rethread even though this is the 12 weight it is thinner than that a lot of people would prefer to use the 8 or the size 8 I prefer the size 12 um, and once in a while the thread will break but not very often so that's my Valdani so now we got that out of the way okay so now gadgets so these are just some of the things that I have learned about the other thing I learned about this year um, from my friend Judith in Colorado excuse me was about these amazing rulers um, and it's funny when she showed it to me she said oh these are great rulers these are quilters select quilterselect.com I ordered two more on fat quarter shop um, 
So I ordered a five inch square and a two and a half inch square. When I first, when she first showed them to me, I said, oh, I don't like frost. I was so snotty. Oh, I don't like frosted rulers. I can't see through them. She goes like, I don't have a problem. And I tried it and these are amazing. So I am slowly replacing because anything of quality is going to cost you. I'm slowly replacing my rulers um, with Quilter Select. Totally worth it. My favorite rulers, Quilter Select, Creative Grids, Block Lock, Add a Quarter, and um, Quilt in a Day Flying Geese. So if I still have time and I can still talk, I'm going to show you how I keep those rulers. I think I'm just going to do it anyway because you know what? I know if you're bored, you can go on to somebody else. So then I'll just share. I'll just share without worrying. Okay, so Quilter Select. This is a great one. This is a good standard size. This is six inches by 24 inches. So I have several of them. I've bought them over all the years that I've done quilting and um, they come in handy for different things. You can double them up when you need to do something really wide. This one, I like I said, it's, it's not cheap, but it's worth it because this frosting on the back helps grip the fabric without having to do these little sticky things. Whoops, something stuck to that. You can buy little grippers. I was gonna show you this. These I have not tried yet. These are called True Grips. Just got these on Amazon and they're supposed to be even thinner than some of the other ones that I've used before that are rubber and then you have to apply them. You don't need that with um, either Creative Grids has a little grippy circle. Honestly, I like this better. This really grips the fabric well. So you just see this is a slick side and I just make sure when I go to use it, I'm not feeling that little bit of grip at the bottom. Then I just flip it over and I'm good to go. So amazing ruler. Then I also bought this size and I am finding it amazing, especially as I'm doing a lot of the project bags. This is two and a half by 18. Really a great size ruler. Um, so those are the two that I have out. I also have, um, I have quite a few different sizes of mats because um, I... I got several from my mom when I got her quilting table, but this quilting table opens out large. So I have one that rolls out all the way so I can do a huge project. And I have one that's twice this size. This is neat. This is a quilter select mat and you can use, it's two sided. So you can use, depending on the fabric that you're doing, you can see it better. This size is the 18 by 24. Um, this one I use often. This is the normal size that I work with. And I also like, since we're showing tips, I have a couple of these and I use these for, and you can see I have one that's totally stained up. When I'm doing the freezer paper applique, you use starch. And that's why I said, I'll do, an, I'll do another show and tell on that. But you get them stained up. I was watching Lori Holt, um, one of her videos on how to make your own ironing board cover. So actually, I'm going to, because this has got good stuff on the inside, I'm just going to recover this. Um, but this is a great one. You can just buy cushion quilters, square and block. So if I'm traveling and I'm going um, to a quilt class or I'm traveling somewhere, I will take a mat. I will not take my quilter select mat. I have my um, Olaf, Orifil, whatever that, green, bright green, Olfa. I have my Ulfa mat. I will take those when I'm traveling and you gotta make sure you have them flat. I didn't realize the sun comes in from my window and my mat, um, I think that's how it warped. So I got one of my mats warped, I had to replace them, but I will not travel with my quilter select and I make sure that I have that covered up um, or the shades down so that one does not warp. But the quality is amazing. Those are the things that I like to travel with. And, um, Here's another cool thing. Um, this is something else that I learned. I got to travel and do some stitching earlier this year. And this was, I think this was just a makeup bag. I used to have this. I had this from a long time ago. But now, not only did I load it up to do some traveling and stitching, but now I just leave this on my table because it has everything in here. So these, since Sue is asking, what are the things that I enjoy using? These are some of this is these are my go-to things. So I'm just going to show you some of these things. Calculator because like I've said, I am no math person and sometimes I'm doing something on my phone so I wanted a separate one. 
poking corners out, this thing. I'm gonna put my glasses on, if I can find them for this, so I can tell you some of the brands. So this one doesn't have a brand. You can get it at any of the stitching stores. Um, okay, so as a stitcher, you know you are gonna be unstitching, or what my mom said was reverse stitching. Um, this is my favorite. This is very sharp, very thin. So because I'm using the 50 weight, um, those stitches get tight in there. So this is amazing. Used to be able to get this anywhere, and I've had a lot of them, and they do dull, so you have to get new ones. I had to actually, this is the Clover brand, and I actually had to order them online because I did not see them in the stores. So again, shopping in stores is harder this year. If you can support small business, please do. These are amazing. I think I ordered four or five because I had to pay shipping. Um, favorite. Now, this is generally by my sewing machine. There are neat seam rollers, and Lori Holt has a really pretty vintage color blue one. Um, I I haven't. I would like to find a neat old, honestly, an old wood um, roller if I could. But I'm using this as a seam presser. Um, you can use this, and then it's also a poker um, that you can use to get corners out. The other thing that is by my sewing machine are two stilettos. So this is one that I purchased recently, I think at Joann's, and this really sharp tip already broke. But as I'm doing the project bags, I'm trying to fold over the corners and get them through the machine. You can use your seam ripper, but I like having this next to me. And I, I, I just found this. Um, it is small and it was lost and my kids, I've had this probably 20 years. My kids used to joke around about it, man, this is lethal. So um, this is a stiletto. And um, you can see, boy, it's kind of like an all AWL. It's metal and it's sharp and it's great. So I just found that last week. I was so excited. Um, but that's another really good one. And then if you get attacked in your sewing room, you're good to go. You can defend yourself. Okay, so here's another Seam Reaper. I got this as a Quilt Guild prize. Um, this is called Seam Fix. For ladies that have um, maybe arthritis in your hands, I know larger things are better for you. They're not comfortable for me. So I would use this, um, but again, you can, it's it's just a little bit bigger, I think, than the clover. But this is a side that was interesting. It's got like a silicone tip, and at first I didn't know what it was. My Rick Rack Remix, I'm going to share with you, I unstitched a whole entire quilt top, and I put it back together. Um, and I use this because as you seam rip, you're going to have a lot of the little threads that you need to get off. And this is grippy, so it helped get those off. Um, I have paper scissors, and then I got the good stuff. I know there's a lot of scissors out there, and boy, I'm trying not to get addicted to scissors, but I'm learning about some amazing ones out there. These were the ones. I got these when I was a teenager. So probably by the time I was 17... I bought this pair of Ginger scissors. This is an eight inch pair fabric. I've already sent it back to the company um, and you can get them totally re um, sharpened and recleaned. I can see there's just a little bit of stuff flaking off here. I will use these till I die. Um, and I am gonna go, I'm gonna be sending them back in and I gotta make sure that, um, I haven't done that for about 15 years, so I gotta make sure before I mail them out there that the company's still in business doing that. I also have a Ginger five inch pair and I use this a lot with my hand applique. This was from, I believe it was my great grandma um, or my grandma. Um, these are little four inch embroidery um, scissors. So Ginger, excellent brand. Um, so those are mine. And then I learned about this, um, about marking. So this is just a clover tool. I'm new to that. Um, then I use these all the time, oh my word. This is the long, um, a long measuring tape. My husband's construction, and I'll call his thing a measuring tape. He says, no, this is a tape measure. Measuring tapes are soft, so I have to be correct. Um, and then I have a smaller one too. I like these softer ones better, but there are other ones that you can get. This is just a clover one that can go out and then it can come back in. There's a lot of cute ones out there too. I just don't use this as often, probably because it's not in my little cute thing. For marking, I use this blue um, water erasable marker from Clover. And then also, I went to a Jenny Lion. We had Jenny Lion. She's an amazing machine quilter. 
and I went to a class of hers um, with our guild and she had these that she sold. I don't even know how to say it and of course it's Japanese. They're smaller. It's a water erasable pen and it is very fine tipped and a stronger tip. So when I want a very fine tip, I use that and I go out, bought quite a few because I go through them a lot. Um, then the other thing, uh, rotary cutters. So I like, I don't even know what the brand is on this. It has, I've seen this at Joann's. You can use your coupon. It says like KW or something. It, it has almost no markings on there. I like the grip. Um, I like how it feels. It's kind of rubbery, silicone-y. I like the feel of this. So when I went to buy another one, I have not used this yet. You can see I have three sizes. Oh, actually four because I got my mom's tools as well. There are four sizes of rotary cutters. I couldn't tell you the size, and if I think about it, I will type this in the directions, but I don't even know if it's gonna tell me. This is for really big ones when you're going through a lot of layers of thread. Fabric, see that's when you can tell I'm tired. It's been 40 minutes of talking. Going through, because there is the, the two sisters, now it's just Janet Nesbitt, one sister. Crazy, the crazy ones where they're doing like 12 layers of fabric and cutting them up, mixing them together. I watched a tutorial. I was determined to do it last year. I bought one of these and I haven't done it yet. But you know what? Half of doing anything is just in the planning and gathering. So this is the one that I used most often. If I'm doing small things, I do this. And then I have never used this. This is, oh, this is 18 millimeter. Um, and this was from my mom. So tiny, tiny, tiny. But I have a whole box of rotary cutters and um, those are those are great to use but that's the one that I enjoy using most often. I have covered most of the bases now I see I have this. It was so cool a friend of mine knew I loved enamel wear and she was at an antique store and saw some enamel wear stuff and she's sending me pictures I said yes buy me that buy me that buy me that and it, it is so cool. I think this was like for doctor's offices um, I don't know why the shape is like this, but I like it. These are my marking utensils. And again, when I got my mom's quilt table, I got everything in it. And she had a lot of marking utensils. And then I have purchased a couple as well. For a sharp tip, um, I have a sew line. And this one I've used a long time. And the tip just wants to keep going in. So I just need to rebuy it because I use it a lot. Um, but these are for very sharp ways to mark your quilt and that's what I'm doing with the border there on the quilt behind me. Then the other marking tool that I found that was helpful that you could really see was the Fonz and Porter um, chalk pencil and there's a set of different colors so that way no matter what you're marking on you can use it. Then the other the other things that I will do to actually mark on my fabric are these two. I, I have a story from my quilting number one on this pen and how I knew that after even like 10 years of being on a muslin quilt, this marking came off. So I know there are a lot of different newer marking utensils, but I'm, I'm not trusting them for long term, making sure that the mark doesn't come back. That's just me. Um, and again, if I have something that I like, I stick with it. I don't like to do different things. Um, so the other two things that I would suggest, a spray water bottle, um, just because I tend, I don't fill my ironing, my iron with water. Um, I just use this because I don't always like to steam and that's just the way I roll. This is the other thing I do not like because I like natural, I do not want artificial fragrances. Um, I feel that they are harmful for me. So I'm not gonna use artificial fragrances when I can at all avoid it. This is a scent free. Now, yeah, there's synthetic chemicals in here, so I'm not totally natural yet. Um, but this is Best Pressed, Mary Ellen's. Best Press, not Pressed. I use this a lot. It just helps now when I'm doing, when I'm, I'm doing my backings, when I'm laying out my quilts. I now, um, not only iron, but I starch my backing because one time I had to totally redo one because it just was not flat enough because I was lazy. So these are out all the time and I use those. Um, what else do I have out here? Wow. Wow. 
I did everything on my table. I'm excited. But now I still need to share these. So yeah, this is going to be an hour long. Um, let me look at my notes so I can go on to other stuff um, on what I'm doing. Okay, so now, now we go back into the more floss tube quilting kind of video. Now that I've showed you all my tips and tricks, or some of them, you're not going to know everything. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I did not write it down, Last year, I found a platform um, online called Blueprint. It was like B-L-U-P-R-I-N-T. It went out of business and Craftsy purchased it. I think it had been Craftsy before, then Blueprint, now it's Craftsy again. So check out Craftsy, just Google it. It's a platform, I have a paid subscription and there are tons of video classes that you can purchase and have forever. I don't know if you have them forever if you're not paying for the subscription. So that I'm going to need to find out. But um, I'm paying for it now. And that's why I was really glad that it didn't totally go under. And there are a lot, there are a lot of beginning sewing, beginning quilting tutorials by people much more qualified than me um, to do that. So that's the other tool that I would recommend is check it out. You can probably do the free one, but there's a lot of classes that you would actually have to pay for. I think when you pay for the subscription, you can watch any of them and then you get to, I had, anyway, not going to go into that because I don't know how the new platform is, but very worthwhile if you need classes on how to sew. Again, I'm just reviewing, making sure I got everything. Okay, so now I just want to share with you some of the YouTubers that I am YouTubers, floss tubers. Let me take a drink. Ah, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Um, this is rooibos. Um, I think that's how you say it. It's a tea, and I, I hadn't liked it as a hot tea recently, and I had several boxes. So I tried doing it as an iced tea, and I put a little bit of stevia in there, and I love it. Um, it tastes great. So I have not been drinking enough water. So there we go. I got my refreshment. Um, okay, so floss tubers that I have been watching that also do quilting, there's a couple of them. There's a lot of them out there, and I am finding them and enjoying them. But um, I've been watching Carol this week. Last two weeks, I've been watching as far as the quilting ladies. Um, Carol Saltbox, Saltbox Stitcher. I caught up on all of Christie's Cross Hatch Quilts. That's her channel. Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. She has a lot of them. I have not caught up on all of hers, but I'm going farther back. Shanda Quilting in Idaho. She just had a brand new video. She was my gateway. Shanda Quilting in Idaho was the very first person that I found searching. She was talking about quilts and watched hers. Anyway, my floss tube number one will explain why she is like my uh, floss tube quilting video queen. And then I also am watching, I believe it's Anna um, of Quilting Roadies. She has a Stitching Roadies, Quilting Roadies. So I started watching one of hers the other day and then I had to go to work. Um, so I am enjoying catching up. I've watched her stitching roadies and now I'm watching the quilting roadies. So now let's talk quilts. So now that we're 48 minutes into this, um, it's going to take forever to upload, but now we can talk quilts. This is Jan Paddock's three cabin, um, quilt pattern. Now I'm going to look at my pile so I don't dump my rotary cutters because I'm barefoot. That would be bad. That's the other thing. You want to be really careful with these rotary cutters. They say not to quilt barefoot. I, I live barefoot, so I'm just careful. I move fast when I drop it because ladies can cut their toes. The other thing is watch your fingers. A lot of ladies might um, do their... I've lost... It regrew. Uh, I was making salsa with a knife and lost part of that fingertip. But be careful with those rotary cutters. If you're quilting with children, be very, very careful. Um, okay, so this is the pattern, and it was a, it was a download, um, so I printed it. And I worked with it, but you can see if you look at this pattern, you will see there are some pointy stars. I don't like pointy stars. I, I, um, I just made soft edges. You can see that star that's not there. Um, what else? 
some of the layout. The layout is going to be different, but it's it's still similar. Um, same pattern for these three cabins. I just changed it up. So the story about, you know, because of course there's a story behind everything with me. The story about why I did this quilt was um, I have been doing, it'll be this January will be my third anniversary for doing the keto intermittent fasting lifestyle. It was not pretty at the beginning. I am a food addict and I've had fluctuations with my weight. And um, I started it kind of like on a lark with a friend of mine and had no idea that I was going to be doing it hopefully for the rest of my life. So I was six, no, by six months into it, I could finally see the weight loss. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'll, it's better. But the first the, the first six months were, were not pretty for me um, because I love food. And it was really hard to do the whole intermittent fasting thing. Again, Dr. Berg has some really great videos um, on how to do it and why you would want to do it. But this is about my quilt. So I wanted to eat. And I wanted to eat now and I wanted to eat bad, but I knew I had my goal. I had like a goal every month and I'm a goal setter and I was going to make that goal. So I thought, darn it, I'm going to start a new quilt and I'm going to do it tonight. But you know, it was late and I couldn't go get a new pattern. And so what did I do? But I went on Jan Paddock's site, instant download, boom, bought it, printed it got back in my fabric room, my sewing room, and I started that that night. So whenever I see this, I laugh. It's like, oh, I remember those days. I still have hard days. Uh, keto and intermittent fasting is not easy, but for me, it's working. It's it's the best thing for my brain um, that I need. I need a lot of help with my brain. So that was the instigation of this, of this quilt, but also because we have a log cabin and because I love my cabin very much, um, I just had to, I had to commemorate it in this quilt. So up at our cabin, um, we have, it's tiny. It's five, I think it's 525 square feet, little tiny thing, an upstairs loft. It, it has a door. You walk up the stairs. It's like Laura Ingalls Wilder. The first time I walked in it, my friend and I went to look at it, um, before we bought it. And as, and I used to love Laura Ingle Wilder, um, Little Little House on the Prairie when I was a kid. That, that was my book, my book series. And so I walked up the stairs and you walk through, it's like the door is on the floor. You can actually walk on the door. Um, I shouldn't, but I have. So the door was open and I walked upstairs. I can still, I can still, it was, it was in December of 1989 and I can still remember that moment. I knew, I knew we had to have this place and I walked up there and I felt like Laura from Laura Ingalls Wilder and, um, that it, the cabin is still so very dear, a series of unfortunate events with that cabin, but we still have it, um, for better or for worse, we still have it. Um, but I love it. It's dear to me. And so when we're upstairs in the loft, um, the, the window right beside my bed, um, I leave it open at night so I can look at least the glass. Um, I don't cover it with the curtain. Let's just say that. Um, I love to look out. So as I'm falling asleep, because it's right close to my bed, because everything's right close, um, I love to look out and I see the moon shadows through the tree. And it, it's just amazing. Um, and then if I get up during the night, I will always look out that window. So this window is very, it's tall and thin, just like that. So I have to be careful not to trip. I make sure I hold on to the windowsill because boom, I could go right down outside if I fell forward. Um, so I look out at night and this is what I see. I see trees and um, not as many trees as before. Our fire, our cabin made it through um, big fires in San Bernardino Mountains in, I believe it's 2003. Um, still is something that I, I try to block out because it was traumatic. Um, our cabin was saved though. Um, God's grace, our cabin was saved. Boots were on the ground. The fire swept through our hillside during the day. We had cleared huge. We had cleared around it big because we knew there, there could be a fire coming um, for months before that because the bark beetle. Our neighbors are gone. Uh, that's a heartache for me. 
Um, our neighbors are gone. They didn't have insurance because insurance in the mountains is ridiculous and has gotten crazy ridiculous now. Our neighbors are gone, dear neighbors to us, um, but their, their cabin was not saved. Ours was. One side of the cabin, um, the forest is devastated. Um, other side of the cabin outside my window, the forest is still there. It was saved. Um, so as I look out there, this is the view that I see, the trees that are there. And we have a fox. We have different fox. We have a lot of animals up there. Um, but it was so funny because my husband loves to go outside at night and look at the stars. And he has no fear. Well, he's now being more cautious because now we have cameras. And they're motion detecting cameras. And we see the bear the mountain lion that walks right through those little trees, big trees, um, fox, skunk, um, what else, uh, coyotes. Do not like the coyotes. The coyotes are new to our community and um, we have a little dog, so we're very careful out there. But he used to go out there with no fear because we didn't know all that was out there. So now he looks up for that mountain lion and makes sure it's not lurking about. Um, but he was sitting out there one night and he looked over, we had an area that there was some water there. So he looked over and about six feet from him, there was a fox. The fox saw him, it took off. So that's to represent that fox. So I, I used to tell him that's his, um, that was his little pet. But shortly after that, we went walking and we saw a fox body parts. So the mountain lion, I think had a dinner that um, the night before. So um, that's, that's why I change things up. I like things changed to me. Um, I even talked about this on one of my videos about the deer that I actually saw walking by this tree that it was supposed to represent. Everything represents something to me in my life. As I was stitching this, a deer walked by right by that tree. It was, it was so cool. So that's my special quilt. I do change things up a lot. And some of the, some of those little critters are from other quilts. The Journey Begins is another quilt that I'm doing that has little critters and trees. So that's probably where I got those other parts. But I change things up. So this is what I do. I sit down with my coffee. I dream. I draw things up. And I figure out what I might want to do. And things don't always come out like that. But I do change things up. And I, oh, I did an inner border too. Um, so that was my dreaming and that's what, how I came up with that one. So that's the three cabin quilt. Then, because now we are at, oh my word, we're already at an hour. Hopefully this will even upload cause I'm not going to do it over again. Um, cause this is the second time around for this video. Okay. So another quilt that I wanted to talk about was this one. So my Rick Rack remix quilt, um, this one is still, it's almost done. I am finishing up in the corner. I chose a matching thread because I love this fabric and I did not want the quilting to take away from this border. Whereas you can see on this one, the hand quilting shows up. Boop. Um, that's what I wanted. On this one, I wanted it to fade in. And so it's really fading in. You can see the white marks um, that I follow from that chalk pencil. Oh, I just breathed in hair. Um, so you can see my hand stitching. It's a little wrinkly right now, but I use it even though it's got pins in it. Oh, now I got hair in my mouth. Okay. Nice. Um, I love the purple and I wanted, so I wanted the stitching to show here and on the edge, I wanted it to fade in here and I have no stitching in here. It's all the same color of thread. I wanted to use the same color. Okay. That's really weird. Uh, excuse me, see if I can get the hair out. Uh, uh. Okay, that's much better. No hair. So the story behind this quilt is that it was a total redo. Um, the first quilt that I put together had these blocks. And yes, these look nice. And I would think, oh, that's a nice quilt. Why would I want to redo it? The way I put it together, I did a bad job putting the sashing on. And the pattern, this is the pattern that I did it from, Blooms for Annabelle. So here's something fun. If you have stayed this long into it, this is my um, share. So if, so I have two weeks. So today is the 19th. Two weeks from, two weeks, less than two weeks. So 
I'm going to do this hopefully this Sunday before two weeks is up. So give yourself a week and a half. I don't even have a calendar. And this comment blooms. No, let's just comment bloom just in case. Um, so comment bloom and this will be your gift. You need to be in the United States because post service right now is not fun overseas. You need to be over 18. And I learned why you don't say, you do not say giveaway in the comment because people search that and they will just come and watch the video. They wouldn't watch an hour of it to find out what they can win. So comment bloom. This was, so blooms for Annabelle. This was the pattern. So you would think, wow, that is a beautiful pattern. Um, but the way I put it together with my colors, it didn't please me. And since I had botched up the sashing, I thought, well, if I have to undo that anyway, let's just totally make a new quilt. Um, so I did. This one is going to be the label. So I wanted to remember because this was one of my favorite um, color matching. That's going to be the label. But you can see I took all the sashing off. That took a long time. But again, I did that when we were up in the mountains and I was just out front with my husband watching the wildlife. Not the scary wildlife, the birds um, and the squirrels and chipmunks. And I undid that. So I'll do that for a log cabin. I'm sure I will use those for something. Took it apart. And somebody had asked me about the pattern for that quilt. I just made up the name Rick Rack Remix. Part of that is because it looks like Rick Rack. And I wanted to share with you, look at this. I had to look up how do I actually spell Rick Rack. Okay, 25 cents. Um, a friend of mine inherited really neat sewing supplies from her neighbor that passed away and she shared them with me. I have a big jar with old, old buttons and all kinds of notions. I have a whole bag of this and since light colors are not my thing, I really want to try to over dye it because I love that these were Catherine's. Um, so anyway, that's my story on Rick Rack. So now I know how, at least they spelled it back then. Where was I? Probably time to stop this video, but I haven't finished everything I was going to share with you. Okay. Oh, Rick Rack Remix because I took it apart, put it back together. You will not find a quilt pattern called Rick Rack Remix because I made up the name. Now, when I Pinterested these blocks, so the block is called a half square triangle. So this is a half square triangle. Um, and again, I'm not going to tell you it's too long of a video if I was going to tell you how to make this. So Pinterest or Google half square triangles, it's really a fun one to learn to make very easy. Um, so all I did was when I Pinterest, I just typed in half square triangle quilt and I pinned a lot of them. I have a gazillion pins cause I love it. And I tried different ones, but again, the dark fabrics that I used, this is the quilt that I came up with. And again, I was not going to piece anymore. I was going to use only what I had and make it work. And I did. Um, so that's how I have this extra block. So Rick Rack Remix. This is also when I did the, the border. These are the, I have a lot of templates, both my own and my mom's um, templates. And this is one I probably got. I think you can get this brand on um, at Joann's. And I really love, I love this style. I don't like the soft curves as much. I like jagged edges. And again, this called for a jagged edge. Okay. Then I also want to share, oh my gosh, I haven't even talked about my sewing machines. Okay, here we go. This is a quilt in progress. And I have to share about it because I said on my floss tube number five, I was going to share about it. This is from the book, Apple Quilt in the Cabin. It's, it's not, it's, it's, out of print, I think there's like one or two available on eBay. Tawny White. I have um, I have two quilts that I'm doing out of that and another one that I want to do because I love Log Cabin. Log Cabin Stitcher. Um, but this was not included in the pattern. So just like everything else, I change things up. This I checked. It is in a book, another book that is out of print. Out of print books are a bit of a challenge and as we're sharing about things that we bought a while ago um, that's kind of hard but the book that that came from warm hearts here's the thing though I was listening to Lisa oh that's who else I was watching um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher and she was talking about um, the book the Raven blackbird designs that she was looking for I was able to snag it before it was gone 
but it's really hard to find blackbird blackbird anything when it's gone it's gone so my sister had this quilt book and I love it because I want to make this quilt and I just searched it searched it searched it constantly on Amazon used one time one day I looked and it was it was probably less than ten dollars it was like immediate boom 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 ordered it got it thrilled that doesn't happen very often usually they have them listed like for hundreds of dollars it's ridiculous so that was just simply um, from that Blackbird book. Then I also added to it um, a cat in the corner. Um, and look at, I added the acorn. That was from a primitive quilting magazine. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to find that one. Um, but you can just make a cat, stick it in there if you like it. And then what else? There's also, oh, here's one that I showed too. That's how I showed... Um, I shared about this on my floss tube. This, this cute little guy was from a Lisa Mojean pattern called Redware. Redware. I have the kit. I bought the kit. Redware Crow table mat. And that's that. He actually had that acorn in his mouth. So the other squirrel. Where's my squirrel? Okay. Um, it'll be a lot easier when I when I finish the, with this. I did. I, I did decide. I. I am going to order light so that way I can show even at night the big quilt done behind me because it'll be easier to see the whole thing. This darling little guy is going to have another, it's going to have an acorn in his hands. This is from another out of print book, Bittersweet Threads. Um, and I showed, see there he is right there. I showed the wool applique pillow that I had made. Um, but you can just, you know, get a design. Coloring books, coloring books have a lot of, of choices too. So the rest of this, you can see the pumpkins are funny looking. Um, the whole reason I did this quilt because I was, I read my diary. Um, okay. So that's what they will have actually little, um, stems on there. The, the border was fun because this is actually in the pattern. Um, isn't that cute? I love how the flying geese, um, work down to where that squirrel is so that will be fun and i don't know if you ladies gentlemen stitchers i gotta stop just saying ladies because um it's just what i'm so used to but i don't know if you stitchers have a kind of a quilt diary so this is like a quilt diary um and it really is a diary for me um but it's really good to keep track of the threads that you use, the, the batting that is inside of it. That for me now has become very important. Um, but I started it. The fun thing is you, you put the date that you started it. I started it, um, in 2011 and I, I read my diary of why I did that. And I was doing it cause I was in the midst of crazy at the time. My husband was working out of state he was out of state working at least three months. Right there, I wrote Kurt's on his, um, on his third month of working in Illinois, um, and it was hard. I was homeschooling at the time, in the midst of depression without my beloved essential oils. Um, and I think I've shared, I do Young Living essential oils. They changed my life so radically um, that I'm now a representative for the company. So email me. I have my email down in the description if you're interested in learning anything about those or getting educated about those. That's the other reason I say ladies is because I do videos to my um, my quilting group, or I have so many groups, to my oil group, and they're all ladies. So um, that's the other reason I say ladies. I'm just used to it. Um, so where was I going with that? Oh, that was before I had the benefit of my oils and before I went off sugar. That's the other thing about keto sugar is not good for crazy people. Um, but I was reading the diary and I can remember it, it was a hard, it was a hard summer, um, for me and, um, got through it with the help of stitching. Um, and it was fun because I remember as I was doing it, I did not trim things up. I was in the midst of crazy and I knew that I really needed to be trimming um, like each time you add another row on, you're supposed to trim it up. At the time I thought, I know, I can see it's wonky. I don't care. I just want to stitch it. And I did. And it is wonky. So that's why I call it my crazy or wonky log cabin um, or pumpkin patch. But 
as I put the blocks together, I could really tell that they were wonky. And so I am going to add, I have lots of applique pieces that will go on that. I have this, this is the other reason I have got to get it done because I found some fabric in here that I had been looking for. So I have like all my pieces for all the hand applique um, in there. And I, that's how, you, when you do the freezer paper and look at, these are all my fabrics that I have had stored in there since 2011. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's where that fabric is. I've been looking for it. So I got to get it finished. The other neat thing that I learned is when you go ahead and put your quilt top together, do the binding at the same time, which is really good, especially because it's taken so long for me to actually do the quilt. I wanted to make, because it's a, it's a lot of colors in that quilt and I wanted the binding not to be a separate color. And of course, I'm not gonna remember when I'm making another quilt that I actually wanted to use this. So I have, and yeah, look at how cool it is to use the strips. That's what I like doing. Um, so I have the binding ready, which is great. Um, the other neat thing is I even had a label. Um, isn't that cool? Didn't even know I had that label in there. So that's the good thing. That's why I like plastic boxes. Um, stored. That's just one of the scrapbooking boxes from Iris. What else was I going to share with you? I think that's everything. I did want to show you, for those of you that are staying till the very bitter end, not bitter, it's going to be sweet. Um, just a reminder in case, because this is, this will be the first time, I'm not good at first time things. This will be the first time I do a giveaway. So it's, hopefully I'm going to do it right. So again, just in the comment, you can, you don't have to do anything else except just say bloom. Um, and that way your comment will come up and I'll do the random comment picker. Check back. So I will comment on your comment. And then of course you're going to need to give me your address so I can give it to you. So if someone doesn't claim it in two weeks, it then goes on to somebody else. Um, so comment bloom and you could be, but remember don't put giveaway in there. And um, that will be given away and I will mail it to you within the US. Okay, so now that we're at the end, I'm still gonna do my little devotional at the end, but I wanted to show you close up. Um, let's just take it off this. Um, I wanted to show you close up some of the details because the details are so beautiful. These are fabrics woven. Oh, I can smell it's dusty. These are wovens. And this was, I think I got this from a Primitive Gatherings. I was at the Road to California quilt show. And um, Lisa Bonjean had a lot of beautiful wovens. So I remember being in her booth, picking out a lot of neat wovens. So these are, those designs are in the fabric. Isn't that cool where it looks like it's brick? Um, and then I've got brushed cottons. And um, I need to do a door handle on there, don't I? I guess it hasn't bothered me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and then this one, um, what can you see on that? Oh, it is neat. Look at that door. I like the texture on that. That's the neat thing about these wovens is the texture, um, beautiful texture. So here's my deer and the tree, and you can see the hand quilting. This was a hand-dyed fabric that I picked up also down at the Road to California. So you can see how I chose to do the stitching, my little fox, and um, and how I wanted that, even though it was a pretty busy fabric for the border, I really wanted the stitching to show up. But because the border was a little bit different style, I just got creative and did them small. So again, I don't like pointy corners, so I just take that star, kind of round it out a little bit more and make it less pointy. Um, maybe that's because I think I'm not so sharp. Um, I'm smart, I just don't do math. Um, so there you go. Um, I think this is my favorite block because of all the texture. I wanted this to represent snow, um, snow in the mountains. So there we go. Oh, here is the other one to see. Um, is that, you know, so there is a lot of value in having a collection of fabrics. I remember I made a huge mess when I was making this quilt. Oh, and this is cool. My sister and mom have given me lots of scraps. And I love, I am too lazy to cut things on the bias, but this was a strip from my sister. 
um, and it looks amazing because it is on the bias. So I'll have to stop being so lazy and um, do that. All right, so this is forever, hasn't it been? But hopefully um, it's bringing you joy. And so um, today is October 19th. Um, what did I want to share with you? Yesterday was, um, was a day that I started out, um, started out a certain way and then something caused, anxiety is like always within me, but something caused me to be a little bit anxious about the future and oh, I'll share with you the bracelet in a moment. Um, so I was fearful, fearful. You know, fear is, fear is common right now, especially. And I thought, okay, God, I know you've, I love, I have memory verses from a long time ago. And sometimes I forget where they are. Um, and I'll remember parts of the verses, but it was like verses. So when I had, I shared, um, that 1999 to 2000, I had kind of a breakdown. Don't know if it was a nervous breakdown, whatever it was, I broke down. Um, and it was a rough time in my life. I also noticed I didn't share about the sewing machine. Um, let's finish this thought. So there was a lot of verses that I remembered at that time and why, and I had, I stuttered at that time as well. Um, I had a stutter that developed because of seriousness of my breakdown. So I was really focusing on healing and getting better and um, really trusting that God was going to walk me through this. And it, it was amazing. That is why my faith is so important to me. I walked through that time. And then even after that, I was able to help others, um, that had similar challenges. But, um, so I know the verses, the Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And then the verse, I think it's in Philippians about how he will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And those are verses and take every thought captive unto Jesus Christ. So those are verses. Those will just play in my mind. Like as I'm driving, eh, scary driving on California freeways, I'll just have those verses going through and just being washed in his word. That's what I need to renew my mind. Um, but I was listening to our church service yesterday and I go to Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. Um, and I chose to watch online, even though they're having in, in person services. Um, he was talking about, it's funny cause somebody's phone rang and he said, and he was talking about God talking to you. And so it was funny. He said, God's, God's, by, uh, phone number. Um, and he said, it's Jeremiah 33, three. And it's like, I know that verse and it's called to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which you do not know. And I thought, I know that verse. I bet it's in my notebook. And yep, I found it in my wrinkly old notebook. Um, that, that verse. And so that's what I was just dwelling on and thinking on when I would get fearful. It's like, no, um, I will call to God and he will answer me and show me great and mighty things about how to make it through, how to make it through these times. And he is, he is faithful. The other thing is when I have anxiety, um, I have not been doing, I have not been sitting down and reading my Bible and doing my devotional, my Bible study that I should that's part of my anxiety. My mind is going so fast to sit down sometimes is hard. And I thought I am, I'm determined to get back into the word. So this was something else that our church does, the one year Bible. And I, I tried for a week to do the whole thing, Old Testament, New Testament, um, Psalms and Proverbs. It broke it down. I'm not disciplined. I'm horrible disciplined. That's why the keto diet has been crazy for me. Um, but I thought, get disciplined at re at least Bonnie read the new Testament or at least read the Psalms, do something every day. So that's, that's what I did this morning. I stopped. I didn't even sit down. That's, that's where the crazy gets to me sometimes, but I got into the word this morning and, um, those were my verses yesterday that helped me. Okay. So now, oh my gosh, hour and 18 minutes. Um, my sewing machine, I think you can see it. If not, this was my mom's sewing machine. Um, oh, I know what I can do. This is the end, so we're going to be okay. I know I can see it there because what I see in the camera, you will see more. Um, so this is my mom's Janome machine. Um, Memory Craft 6500. She got it. I saw the receipt, 2005. 
She loved it. My dad bought it for her as a gift. And um, she used it. She loved it. It has a lot of fancy stitches that I tend not to use. Um, but it can go fast. It has a good, strong motor. So I can machine quilt on it if I choose to. I love it. She got the extension. And this is hers, too. So this is fun. She, put, she loved stickers. And she loved plastic boxes. So I've got all her stuff still in her box. And then here's the other treat, wool pin cushions. This is what I wanted to share with you. This is one that she made, and she made one for me. It's a little bit tighter and smaller, so I like it. Wool sharpens and cleans needles. Can get all the rust stuff off there. That's her machine, um, but I took it in for servicing one time, and I wanted to go to a class, and I thought, how am I going to do that? And I bought a sewing machine for $100 on Costco. It got shipped to me. Um, so that's the other thing. And look at how light this baby, heavy, heavy. And I, I now will not travel with it because I went, um, on, I went somewhere, took my sewing machine with me and I had that Roland, Joanne's rolling case. It hit something and it tipped over and fell. It's done that twice. And I thought no more traveling with that machine because it's precious to me because it was mom's and, and it, it was probably about fifteen hundred dollars at the time in 05 that's that's good money to spend and I want to I want to treasure that so this guy is super light my very first machine like I said was a brother and so man I know brother machines this being very light is wonderful um, so this I can travel with it but it has a couple specialty stitches um, but all I when I'm stitching usually all I do is back and forth and zigzag and I'm good to go what is this? This one is the XM3700, but I am sure that Costco, a lot of other places, will have an inexpensive brother machine. And my very first brother lasted a very long time, and it got a lot of work. So those are the machines that I wanted to share with you. This is my stitching place, and then when I'm sitting and doing my embroidery, I love these inexpensive lights. Again, Joann's. There are three levels, um, it's bright, and that way I can move it either to my machine or over here. Oh, Riley's gonna start barking, I have FedEx delivery. I like that, I sit down there, and I have, if you are into embroidery um, and needing the magnifying, please check out my floss tube number three. I talked about my perfect setup, which I moved my perfect setup off to the side so I can have my video going here, but there's a lot of tools and tricks that are out there. I also shared about this, on my floss tube number five. So hope you've enjoyed this. Um, thank you for sticking all the way through it if you have. And God bless you guys. And I encourage you to choose joy nevertheless. I'm practicing that joy nevertheless. There goes Riley. Um, thank you guys so much and God bless you. Goodbye.